Moss reported back on all the stuff uni's been doing over the last year. Quite a hefty discussion of the finances, but uh, got all that in paperwork to read through before. Uh, but the best thing about it was just in the Q&A session, we had a uh, member of the chemistry department stand up and uh, ask everyone who's going to be affected by these cats to stand up. And about half the room stood up and it put a great human face on the effects that the university's current proposed plans are having. And hopefully this can try and convince the uni to find a different way forward. So, yeah, overall, I think it's going to be positive moving forward. Nice, nice, thank you. Deal. Uh, I was born in 1997 on the wrong side of Offa's Dyke in uh, Harrow in England. Because Wales is the better side of Offa's Dyke, obviously. Yeah, so that's my granddad, um, his election leaflet when he was uh, running for Labour in 1971. It's what I built here. So, as a kid, when I was growing up, I went through a number of different things. Uh, I think the very first thing I ever wanted to be was a train driver. And these are the tickets things that I mentioned that I collect. So, which if you're a saddo like me, people look at this and go, "Oh, these are nice." In fact, if you're a super saddo like me, like some of them are like rare because the machines no longer exist. And then I think from about the age of nine or ten. Uh, maybe even slightly earlier, I wanted to become an archaeologist because of the amount of time team that I watched. And so I've been pursuing that ever since, which has led to me studying archaeology, at which point I decided, eh, maybe archaeology isn't for me, maybe politics is. So, you know, goes in roundabouts. What's that flag? The yellow one. Oh, this one? Yeah. The one that's fallen down. Um, right, so it is the battle flag of uh, England. Uh, legend has it that it was raised above Carnarvon Castle. Um, in 1402, I think. Um, yeah, so that's the battle flag of Glendur. That's his house flag over there. You know, proper good Welsh revolution. I decided to come back to Wales because I always knew I was going to. My family have such strong connections here, and uh, I've always had this uh, sense of hiraith, this feeling that I won't be home, I won't be happy until I'm, you know, back in the land of my fathers, so to speak. Okay, um, yeah, so the court that happened by me a couple of months back now, um, basically it finished. So the court is one stage of the university's inner workings. It works alongside the Senate and the Council. And realistically, the court doesn't have much power. Its effective role is to report back what the other institutions have done. Uh, but effectively, before Christmas, the Council voted for cuts. This then put into a motion a strategy plan in which uh, the university were deciding where it could make the cuts. It looked most at chemistry because it considered it a uh, failing degree and then removing staff from other positions across the unit. But this, is, this isn't actually a decision the university has to follow. All they have to do is make a saving. The decision that they, uh, what they want to do is do that through staff, which we all feel is a great, uh, isn't going to be the best way to do it and is greatly um, harmful for the university in the long run. If I could go back to the University Court and ask some more questions, it would definitely be why they hosted the consultation period in the way they did, when it was clear that they were never going to listen to us in full. They were already committed to closing chemistry, they would already committed to firing staff. This is obvious because they failed to explore alternative savings even when they were pointed out. So I think I'd ask why the University was so committed to staff redundancies and not, say, reducing its estate or looking into other financial saving possibilities. home to the School of Chemistry, uh, the school that is um, going to be closed um, as has been announced a few weeks back uh, as part of these cuts. Um, it's the one of the founding courses of the university when it was founded in 1884, chemistry was taught. It's um, the only place in Wales you can study Welsh language chemistry. So what's going to happen is the degree is going to stick around for two years, two, well, 
It's going to stick around. It's not taking any applicants for the 2019-2020 academic year, so it's going to teach out everyone who started in 2018-19, so that's about two and a half years' time. During that time, um, teachers who specifically teach first year modules, there's not going to be any new first year, so they'll be the first to go, uh, along with associated support staff, until the point where there is no one studying chemistry anymore in two years' time, and then all staff to do with chemistry will be you know, at complete risk of not having their job. There'll still be chemistry modules taught as part of um, joint honours, so not every staff is going to be gone, but the majority of single honours chemistry staff are going to go. So students in this department are going to be facing the prospect that the degree they applied for isn't going to be the same degree they finish with. And worst, uh, worst of all, is that during this whole process there's nothing to stop members of staff leaving early to find better, more secure jobs, as is their right if they're able to. Basically you know about specific staff stuff I'm yeah. assuming, so I Ish. don't know that. I know roughly, the VC told me it's roughly 10 to 15 staff from this department. I know that they are shutting chemistry down uh, a year after I leave, so that's in two years, and that they're cutting the, um, I know that they're cutting the staff down to a third each year. I've done my degree and then um, my dissertation options are cut down and the staff I like will probably be sacked. Having Welsh language is extremely important and so working in the chemistry field in North Wales, having a Welsh language chemistry degree is vitally important. And so, you know, this is the centre of Welsh language chemistry in Wales, but specifically in North Wales, you know, people come here, study chemistry here in Cymraeg and then work in the chemistry field locally. Okay, so I care about making change because the status quo is unsustainable. We're in a system where, you know, the richest of the rich benefit at the expense of everyone else. The top, uh, like, five families in the UK own half the wealth of the UK. Wales as a country has some of the highest levels of poverty anywhere in the UK. I think 30% of children in Wales grow up beneath the poverty line. You've got people relying on food banks just to get them through the week. And specifically in Bangor, it's a historic city which has had so much importance and so many events. But it, it's got to keep moving forward and, you know, with the possible redundancies at the university, I feel like steps are going backwards rather than forwards and change is something that definitely has to be made definitely has to be put moving forward and you know I, I might have only moved here three years ago but I consider myself banger to my core I mean in, to quote the ancient rules of Hall Var if you live in Gwyneth for a year and a day you're afforded the same rights and privileges as a local I do consider myself to be you know of banger and when people ask where I'm from I say banger And so seeing my city in a situation where it's moving backwards isn't something I'm okay with and I want to see the city move forward. So my personal affinity to Wales comes from, you know, hailing from a Welsh family. Yeah, I, I grew up in England, but uh, my father's Welsh, you know, as far back as you can trace the Herkham family, we've been a Welsh family. And so I always knew I was going to return to Wales, that unyielding sense of Hiraith. And so when, I, when it became time that I could move out from home, study at university, I looked at Welsh universities and found Bangor. Um, it's a fantastic atmosphere to uh, learn Welsh, which I'm doing. I have come out my shell so much since being here. Um, I have no plans to ever leave Bangor and um, for the next few years at least I'll be heavily involved um, further in local politics. Later tonight as it happens I've got my installation as the Deputy Mayor of the city. Yeah, so I hope Bangor can uh, come out of this uh, financial crisis that the university finds itself in. So I will not be quiet, I will continue to protest in the future, so depending on the rest of the case studies and how many people we can get together, considering this is dissertation, revision and you know a stressful time for students, we're going to be, we're planning possibly doing an occupation of the chemistry tower, force the issue into the forefront of the university's mind. And that's why I want to fight for change and that's why I, hopefully I am fighting for change. <laughs> Right. Listen to this man, I'm voting for him for next councillor, Mr <laughs> Hallowood Colwyn Bay. I already am a councillor here in Bangor actually, oh, are you? I'm not taking any backhands, believe me. <laughs>